Hello, Tony. Thanks for joining us again. Hello, Chris. No problem. You good? So Tony was with us yesterday. Did a fantastic talk uh, about how to choose the right builder. So if you missed that, it's available on demand in the in the portal area. So go and have a look at that. There's some great top tips there. Just the really, I felt it was a really open, transparent way for any business to, to be. So you know, especially going in if you're spending and investing a lot of money in your home projects, then that's definitely worth uh, a look. And, and Tony's back today to talk to us about a, a more specific area of building, which is all around heritage and conservation projects. So um, do you want to start, Tony, introducing yourself uh, and yep. Free Construction again? Yep. Yeah, so Free Construction, we're, uh, we're a building company. We have a specialist niche to our side to our company, which is historic brickwork, uh, conservation, restoration, repairs. And we work closely with other restoration companies. Um, so alongside, so not, not only the, uh, the general building side of things, we, we specialise in historic stuff. So it's quite, um, it's quite a different sort of, um, a different element of, of works from traditional building to uh, conservation and heritage work. And you really need to be, uh, know what you're doing because you can cause a lot of damage and a lot of harm to potentially irreplaceable listed buildings. Yeah, so that, that was one thing that struck me. Obviously, we know each other for a few years now, but just then that kind of yeah, area of, of needing specialists um, and not just getting you know the guys who did your last extension on your 1990s house or whatever that can just come in and take over some period of property. And, and actually, the specialist nature of obviously and having the experience, I guess, as well, seeing all the, the pitfalls, because I imagine they can be quite tricky projects and you need people that really know what they're doing, thinking ahead, and able to deal with things as they arise as well, right? Yeah, well, it's that, like you just said, the thinking ahead part. Um, yeah. For instance, with with my element, the brickwork, uh, you could you could do a nice repair, look look lovely. Um, if you use the wrong materials, then later down the line, uh, it could cause damage to the property. For instance, uh, say you're going to repoint a, a, a solid wall construction, old nineteen. 1900s cottage which is no cavity and it's a lime based mortar if you were to go and use a cement based mortar you're actually locking moisture in that wall and you can cause damage but you wouldn't know that uh, most people would think it's a stronger material go and use the strongest thing you can to, to, to repair some work um, but you're actually causing a lot of detriment and years down the line that, that'll show that all of the bricks will blow and it's, it's not um, it's not a good repair so you know you need to know what you're talking about you need to plan ahead um and yeah just engaging that that's just my area and there's loads of other fields for instance the same thing with rendering a, 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 um, a place you need to use a breathable render because the moisture is trapped inside that building it needs to re be released okay brilliant all right well, yeah let's get into your because you've kindly prepared some information for us to have a, a run through with so um if i just get this uh going out here so um so you've pulled together a couple of uh, well, a few a few tips for us then. So tip tip one. Yeah, so plan yeah. early, especially if you're in a conservation area. Um, it can be quite a lengthy process. So you want to get in touch with your um, conservation officer as early as possible, and work with an architect who understands the area that you're in and and uh, what's required, so that uh, it all sort of runs smoothly. Um, there's no no point in wasting time and going ahead with a plan or design and then you, you can't go ahead with it. So, uh, you know, and, and also get some pre-app advice from your local authority if you're going for a, um, an application and they'll, they'll just help you out. It just saves you time and money really. And also if you want to take the, the builder along with you to the, the pre-app meeting and you can bounce ideas off of one another, that's, that's another good idea. Great. How early would you expect to get involved with yourself then, Tony, in that, that sort of process? Yeah, design stage, um, yeah. it, and even just for advice, uh, just having a look at the property, if it's an existing property that, it, it, that you can go and view um, before you, if you're going to purchase it or before you've purchased it or you might own it, then yeah, by all means, we'd come along and, and have a look um, and give it advice and we could work with you to get through planning permission with, with, our, um, with the architect and stuff we work with, our consultants that worked in the past, Got a, it's quite a sort of um, close knit community in that sort of area. Uh, there's not really uh, a lot of trades that specialise in historic work, which uh, it keeps it quite sort of niche. 
Yeah, great. Okay, brilliant. So, so then I guess this is a, a key one, like we've just been talking about experience wise, but. Yeah, again, but touching on what we uh, just said, using the right contractor, um, to, the right contractor for a job and had, had experience in, um, in what you're trying to achieve. They could be a great builder uh, in other aspects, but no experience in what you're trying to do. So, and that could cause you problems, um, all sorts of problems. Like I say, with, with the, with the repointing and the, the wrong mortar, for just one example, one tiny element of a, a building, uh, it could cause a lot of trouble later on down the line. And I know that from the talk this morning, actually, the, uh, by uh, Thames Valley Windows, so Paul there was saying about um, they get involved in sort of heritage and conservation projects as, as well as they have a, a kind of a level of understanding um, from their side. So, you know, I guess like from an advice point of view and, and recommendations, would you have other contractors then you'd sort of bring into the mix at, at, as you needed to? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's, that's the way it sort of it works with, with this sort of work. I get calls all the time from other contractors um, getting me in to do their elements and, and vice versa. Uh, it's, it's, it's knowing, having a good team, of not, not necessarily your own team, just like a, a network of um, specialist trades who are reliable and, and you can work with well. And we've sort of discovered the good eggs from the bad eggs over the years. And uh, yeah, it's a quite a nice network at the minute. Brilliant. Yeah, good. Okay. Cool. And then um, major tip. Yeah, expect the unexpected. So I've done a lot of jobs. Um, a lot of clients with period properties are different to your average client. They, they sort of uh, appreciate what you're doing. They love their house because it's their uh, project and they're really passionate about uh, the conservation of this building. But everyone I speak to, they all say it's a labour of love and things arise unexpectedly, you know, you can open up a can of worms sometimes. So just be very, very cautious about what you do try to do. And, you know, it, it can, uh, it can uh, overrun sometimes. Um, just, just, it's just sometimes you just be unfortunate with the property. So just be, be careful. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, there's some good, yeah, top tips there, which I think you're kind of, Absolutely vital. So we've got a few questions coming in. I had a few that uh, people have submitted before this talk as well. So we'll run through that in a sec. Um, we just wanted to recap really your offering everyone for the show this uh, this weekend and kind of going that this free consultation. So basically Tony's happy to, um, and the team there are happy to kind of talk through any requirements you've got, give you ideas, uh, budgets, all those sorts of things. So navigate by the exhibitors area uh, and find the McBee profile and you can either kind of live chat or submit a form there to, to get in touch with Tony and the team. And then um, and we'll go through some specific kind of questions in this area because we thought that's probably a bit more relevant as well. So if I uh, just go back here and then, um, so one of the questions that are previously come in, Tony, was about, uh, so in regards to heritage projects and sourcing materials, how and where should one look for these? So it's kind of, I guess, you know, how would you go about sourcing matching materials and things where it's required. How does that work? Again, you can get, where, where you've got specialist contractors, there's also specialist suppliers. Uh, for instance, we use a company, HG Matthews. They are, they, um, they recreate the old methods of, of making uh, oh, right. historic bricks. Yeah. And you just can't get a brick match sometimes with different sizes and, and they'll just do a special, uh, special mold for that project or, or whatnot and it's uh it's, it's yeah that's that's the way i would go about it you wouldn't just go down to your local wicks and or <laughs> you, know, you need to make sure you you use specialist suppliers that's yeah same as contractors yeah great okay uh, another question with going, going back on that you're the um contractor that who you use will will know what's what materials and what suppliers to to go for um I wouldn't expect them to leave it down to the client to source the materials, uh, not knowing what they're dealing with. Sure. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Um, second question, which is is more related to like purchasing a property. Um, so we're thinking about buying a period home. What should we look out for to avoid? So, is there any sort of telltale signs that you would be looking at um, and thinking to swerve? Yeah. Um, bad repairs. 
which could be ir irreversible. Look for uh, add-ons, um, you know, uh, the integrity of the building, get a survey done before beforehand. It would be a, a wise purchase um, tool. And uh, yeah, I think the main thing with, with myself, what I do it for is, is repairs, which like I said, with the repoint, I keep going on to that, but if you, have, if you buy a property and it's been repointed with a, with a cement based mortar, you know that that's going to cost you quite a bit of money to break that all back out and repoint it again. Right. Yeah. So, okay. And then, so I had a question myself actually around any elements that you see that are, are nice kind of additions or features to put into um, kind of period properties, anything that, that jumps out, the things that either. Yeah. Put? It depends on your um, your planning restrictions, but I personally like a lot of uh, you see these glass um, glass complements to our building. So it just be like glass on the side, like a structure, and it's not really um, been too um, doesn't deter too much from the original uh, structure. Um, uh, so that's one feature. Uh, I think. Are you talking about externally or, or internally? Just in general, like I guess that you, you see various projects you work on. Is there anything that's caught your eye? You just think it's nice? Yes, it's mainly the contemporary mixed with the historic. Really. Yeah. That's the, a good blend. That's my personal preference. Uh, and it's a bit of a wow factor. Can, can make an old shabby house look really well, you know, yeah. without changing the house too much. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal with conservation areas is re reduce the, the amount of demolition. Um, right. just just complement what's there and if you can do as, the least demolition as possible conservation officers should be happy yeah good stuff okay and it, what what are typically kind of expensive scenarios then that people get themselves into is it like obviously kind of restoring bad repairs and things like that um but yeah any any sort of scenarios that are just that you know from day one yeah because I know what it's like when you get caught up in the romance of looking at buying an old property and it just look and you kind of, yeah, well, that should be all right. And it's, but actually when you get into it, you realize yeah. that it's going to be a money pit. <laughs> I think the problem people have quite often is going in too quickly, um, not getting the, not planning right, getting plans done up without engaging with the local authority or conservation officer yeah. and then finding out, oh, actually, this is well, we can't do this, I have to redesign it, or, or there's, um, you know, or the, the neighbours aren't, it's not going to get past. Yeah, that's the main thing I've found. People come along and want to quote for this and that, and then you think, oh, blimey. So, yeah, I think that's the main thing. Get planning early and you should be okay. Yeah, good advice. Cool, okay. All right, well, look, thanks a lot for giving up your time today, Tony, to talk to us. That was really insightful in that area. Um, as it was yesterday so yeah the, this talk will be available uh, on on demand as well on your profile so um i know you're going to join us for the, the panel discussion later as well um but yeah thank you for your time and um no problem Speak to right. you soon. cheers oh.